Rwanda is on a mission to ensure food and nutrition security, modern agribusiness technology, professionalizing farmers in terms of production, commercialization of the outputs, and creation of a competitive agricultural sector. In this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda, we dive into how education and innovative agriculture merge to create exponential results for the nation. My name is Murundi Sara, and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. Rwanda is on a transformational path from a low-income to a middle-income country. The agricultural sector is the backbone for sustained economic growth to provide quality livelihoods and high living standards for the population. What are the challenges facing this integral part of the economy? Uh, one, one main thing is education because many of the farmers have not yet uh, have not gone through the education process. So it, it's, it's, it's not easy like to, <clears throat> to convince them to use the technologies, <clears throat> but with the support of the government, uh, people, I mean farmers are, tr are starting like to, to know the technology is helpful. And uh, when installing these technologies, it's better as we've done to, uh, to, to give training to the farmers, uh, to show them the use and how to use it and its importance to the farmers. So we are regularly giving like trainings to them, uh, like uh, how they can take care of the devices and how they can utilize it. Uh, because the technology is advancing and we need like uh, farmers who are educated uh, to use these technologies. I mean agriculture contributes like 30% on the GDP. So it's a, a, big, a big sector that we have to invest in. And uh, one of it is like uh, going for precision agriculture, like applying the agriculture inputs efficiently so that we get the big, I mean, we increase the quantity of production as well as we are reducing the expenses. That's why we are entering the phase of uh, agriculture, pre precision agriculture. So with the Vaza farm devices and Linda farm devices, we are using green technologies uh, because you see, we are using water from Umovumba for irrigation, and this water could be used for a uh, big land. So it's better if you use them efficiently, if you use the water efficiently, so that the water saved can be used for other land. Because uh, Rwanda is planning like to, to put more irrigation infrastructures in different areas. That's why we will need much water. So we, it's better if that, one, that comes when we are ready to use water effectively. Despite the challenges, the government of Rwanda, along with the different private sector stakeholders, have joined forces on different avenues to mitigate the challenges within the agricultural sector. Well, Howard Buffett, a number of years ago, had a vision for a different approach to agricultural education in Africa. And I think he, he understood that hands-on learning really helps students grasp both the theory and principles, as well as how to do things. So he studied Africa in general and decided that Rwanda was the place that he felt this kind of an institution would be most successful. Right. So he partnered with the government of Rwanda to do that, to develop RICA. Well, uh, I chose to study agriculture because my country still faces some challenges in agriculture like drought. Yeah, so I chose to study agriculture to, because I thought that it could provide me with a great platform um, to learn more about what uh, I can do to solve those challenges in agriculture. Yeah. So, to start with, there are many good institutions that teach agriculture very well, but they teach theory and, and principles primarily, not hands-on, because that, that's expensive. And so it's very common, and it doesn't matter if you're in Rwanda or the US, students graduate from an institution and still need to learn how to do things. They know the theory, but they still need time to learn how. We expect RICA graduates to know the theory and to graduate and to be able to immediately impact agricultural productivity in Rwanda. Uh, so we started as young engineers uh, who were doing engineering uh, as, 
as a course. So we thought how we can use our engineering background to make uh, innovative technologies that can support uh, f farmers. Uh, that's when we started as a group of young engineers. Uh, we started in 2015 as uh, classmates and uh, some other students uh, working as a research and development team uh, by working on innovations. So we started by then uh, with different backgrounds, some from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, and uh, electronics and telecommunication, and even computer engineering. So we are a group combined from different, different backgrounds. Uh, so we started from there. Let alone we came up with the ideas of implementing uh, emerging technologies, inclu including Internet of Things. That's when we thought of intru introducing some of the products that uh, use Internet of Things to help farmers uh, perform their agriculture activities in a modern way. Rwanda's needs within the agricultural sector are very specific and therefore need specific solutions to hit the nail on the head in order to tackle issues ranging from farming on the very hilly land to infertile land. We inherited a site with soils that were highly degraded. That's not unusual in Rwanda. So we are working towards building soil health and soil quality here. Through reduced tillage, we do have the added advantage of good irrigation systems. Um, we're able to use lime and other inputs, pesticides and fertilizer as appropriate. And gradually we're building our soil quality. So I think that's the foundational innovation that we're doing. But then we're also encouraging students to think about creative innovations that they can develop. And you heard us talk about drones today. Uh, not just that we think that a smallholder farmer is going to use drones, but for our farmers to think about how some of the technology that's used in other parts of the world could be adopted to smallholder production here in Rwanda. So far we've learned um, like using modern uh, irrigation tools like center pivot irrigation, drip irrigation, uh, yeah. Currently we are working on irrigation monitoring and helping farmers put irrigation water efficiently. So we are correcting some parameters from the farm including soil moisture, soil temperature, electric conductivity and by now we have added more products for nutrients monitoring. So we are asking the farm how much is there and how much needed for the crops. So the farmers are receiving the data from the devices installed in the farm, the other farm devices and they are receiving the information from the farm and they are responding to the to the notifications accordingly, giving the, the, the farm, I mean the crops, how much they need without putting the too much for wastage or less for uh, because when the plants receive more of what it needs uh, the production is less and when it receives less uh, the production is less also it's better to keep the plants in i mean the crops in good conditions so we are using the buzzer farm devices like to give uh, to, to always keep the plants in optimum condition so that the production is more uh, and the expenses are less. Now that we have a glimpse into some of the unique agricultural innovative solutions that are being tailored for Rwandan farmers, let's take a look into RICA, Rwanda Institute for Conservation Agriculture, the game-changing institution that is revolutionizing agricultural education in the country. So in the first year um, of our studies, we just learned uh, basic sciences, mathem uh, mathematics, biology, chemistry, and spend uh, enough time uh, on farming. Yeah, it's like uh, a family of a smallholder farmer. Yeah, we try to imitate that family. And in the second year, we uh, get introduced to enterprises, including uh, animal production, um, crop production, uh, mechanization, row and forage. And in the third year, we choose one specialization. Uh, we have four uh, specialization, crop production, animal production, um, food processing, and mechanization and irrigation. So you choose one uh, specialization, and then you spend uh, six months learning more. And then uh, the six other months are spent in, the, in an internship. Yeah, to gain like uh, a work experience. Our overarching uh, goal as an institution is to see that 80% of our students becoming entrepreneurs in 
uh, various uh, nodes of the value chains in agriculture. But uh, our students can also be managers. They can, they can also work as managers in agricultural enterprises, both in the public and the private sectors. Um, they can be um, uh, uh, consultants in the sector. So uh, if it happens that they are not uh, becoming entrepreneurs, they will definitely become very good human resources for the institutions that are operating in agricultural value chains in, 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 in Rwanda and beyond. The future is looking very bright for Rwanda's agricultural sector, with the incredible innovative solutions springing up and a wide range of well-educated experts in agriculture joining the workforce. The impact this will have on the economy will be exciting to witness. Well, I want to become an entrepreneur uh, who will use uh, plant biotechnology tools uh, to revolutionize agriculture. So in five years, I can say that uh, I picture myself as a, an entrepreneur and as a plant scientist uh, who would have um, brought new varieties, new crop varieties suitable to, uh, to our climate conditions. Rwanda is uh, one of the uh, nations with the youngest populations in the world. Actually, it is the number one uh, country in the world with the youngest population. So if you impart specific skills to um, uh, the young population, like the Rwandan population, you definitely are steering economic activities alongside uh, agricultural value chains and uh, you best basically are contributing to the um, economic development and growth of the country. So, and, and remember, Rwanda is also um, not, not, not exempted from the unemployment challenges. Okay, Just like any other African country, it is also facing unemployment challenges. And um, so if you impart some specific uh, skill sets and um, uh, knowledge to students and they, they can have uh, the ability to take a step to go and uh, establish a, a business, for example, a lo on a, a particular agricultural enterprise, that means they will be employing themselves but also creating opportunities for others to be employed in the enterprises that they will create. I, for one, am very excited to see all the brilliant, innovative agricultural solutions coming to life and facilitating the traditional methods of doing agriculture. The future of agriculture in Rwanda is indeed very bright. Well, that's it for this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Thank you for watching. Let's keep the conversation going on Twitter. To engage with us, you can tag us on our Twitter handle at CNBC Africa or tag me directly at the Murunji Sarah.